I thought I would start off by showing you a quick example of what you can use the passing trigger feature for in Eximetry. In this example, I made a couple of different animations of this car in Unreal. And I wanted to be able to trigger these animations in Eximetry at any point in time. The cool thing is, with this feature you can. And once you have these animations in Eximetry, you can still set up your own virtual cameras, your moves, everything. You can even trigger multiple animations at once. It's really cool. Um, so let me show you how to set up passing trigger in a project. It's really simple. So here is a scene that I downloaded off the marketplace. It's a good old Western scene. And for some reason, I thought it'd be really cool for a 1980s hatchback uh, to go through this scene. I know that doesn't make any sense. I guess I was thinking like back to the future or something. Uh, but anyway, I recorded a couple of different sequences of this 1980s uh, Volkswagen going through the scene. If you look here, here is one recording. It's basically just turning this corner up here and coming around. And then I've got one doing what I would do if I was in the desert is some donuts here. So we're just doing some donuts and some circles here. So those are the two different animations that I have recorded in Unreal. And now what we want to do is we want to be able to trigger those animations at any point in time in Eximetry. So we have to do that in our blueprint. So I'm going to go up here to my level blueprint. So the first thing I need to do is I need to create a couple of things here real quick. I'm going to make a new variable and I'm going to call this sequence one. Then I'm going to go over here to the variable type and I'm going to type in level sequence. And if you look down here, something called a level sequence actor. And I'm going to select that and I'm going to hit object reference. As soon as I hit that, I'm going to hit compile. And then I'm going to go down here to our default value. You'll see sequence one. And I'm going to select car animation start. That was the first little animation I showed you guys is the, is the VW coming down through the buildings in the old Western town. So I'm going to select that. I'm going to hit compile and save. And now I'm going to drag this into the blueprint. Then I hit get sequence one. So now I'm going to go here and I'm going to type in play. And if you look down here, play sequence player, that's what we want. Play sequence player. So now that we have the selected, we are now going to type in bind event to trigger. And you look, it's not showing up. We got to turn off this uh, context sensitive. And there it is, bind event to trigger. So we're gonna put this right here. Okay, we're now going to add custom event. We now have a custom event. Okay, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to our target here and we're gonna type in get axiometry trigger. So we're gonna get axiometry trigger and what we're gonna do is we know this is the first uh, animation that we would want to trigger when we get to uh, Eximetry. So we're going to call this car one. Okay, so that's car one. We've got our trigger. We now need to take our event begin play and take this down to our bind event. And then we'd need to take our custom event out of here into play. So, and we'll compile this real quick. So once we get into Eximetry, uh, once we trigger car one, it's going to start this custom event, which is that car uh, going down in between the two buildings. Now for fun, I want to add a second animation. I want to, I want to include the second animation uh, that I built. I want to, I want to have the ability to play that anytime in Eximetry. So basically we're going to go back to our variables and we're going to do the exact same thing. So I'm going to hit a new variable here. I'm going to type in sequence two. And if you look over here, I'm going to select, oh, I got to, I've got to compile it. I got to compile it. So there we go. I've compiled it. So now I can come down here and select car animation circle. So I've selected car animation circle. 
I'm going to compile again. And I'm going to drag this into the blueprint. And there it is. Get sequence two. And now we're going to do exactly the same thing that we did up here. So I'm just going to go ahead just really quickly. I'm going to copy and I'm going to paste this. And let's move this here. We'll put this to our target. Move this here. We're going to add another bind event to trigger. There it is. We're going to add another custom event. Okay, now we're going to add another get asymmetry trigger. And there it is. We're going to call this one car two. Okay, now we need to take our custom event off of the trigger and put that to play. So there we go. Here is here is our blueprint to trigger these animations in Xymmetry. So I'm going to compile this. I'm going to hit save. And then I'm going to close out of this blueprint. And this tutorial is taken in consideration that you already know how to add the Xymmetry camera blueprint into your Unreal scene you know, and change your custom depth, uh, stencil pass and all that. Um, so this tutorial is taking consideration that you know all that stuff. So for now, we're just going to go ahead and hit cook content for Windows. Okay, our cooking's complete. And now we're going to go into Xymmetry. So I've already got a sample project set up, everything in here except for the Unreal uh, project that we just cooked. And if you look here, I've got my virtual camera and I've got a person over green screen. If you look here, this is something I just downloaded off video blocks. Here's our person over green, go full screen. And so we'll be incorporating that into the scene as well. So I'm gonna disconnect that and I'm going to load my Unreal project that we just cooked a second ago. And if you look down here, here are our two passing trigger pins, car one and car two. If you look over here, there are the triggers for it. So let's go ahead and connect everything up here. We're gonna do our cam transform, our cam field of view. And I love that they've added this into the new version, the cam focus distance. It's so awesome just to have that already in here. Uh, you know, you can do rack focusing on things, uh, you know, with a MIDI controller. Uh, or, you know, just a standard controller, it's really cool. So we're gonna connect her into here. And if you look, there's our shot. So I'm gonna go ahead and go to our camera. I'm gonna move over here. Go full screen. So there's our shot, there's our talent. But the reason why we're all here, we, we wanna see how this passing trigger works. So now I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna click the trigger right now. If you look, look right down there, there's a car coming around the corner. And the cool thing is you're seeing everything here sort of you know raw, I haven't added any cine effects or uh, post-processing effects like you saw at the beginning. Uh, in the beginning I had a vignette, I had some colorization going on, I had some grain. And you know, the cool thing is you can add all that stuff at any point in time. But the real reason we're over here is like, hey, you know, I wanna see if we can have a couple animations at once. So I'm gonna move over here. And if you look, I'm gonna move here and I am going to trigger another animation. And look at that. So we've got two animations. I'll click this again, you'll see. We've got two animations going on at once. This car is coming around the corner again. And we've got this guy here, which is super sweet. At any point in time, we can move our camera, do other camera moves. We can start these animations at any point in time. But you'll see here, you know, as soon as the animation stops, it just sort of resets. And you'll see what it looks like here. So that animation has stopped. And, you know, if you ever want to reset it, you know, just hit trigger the animation again. So... I have found if you're making animations in Unreal and you just sort of, you want to have some some head and tails on those animation uh, and sort of time those out, 
So you have enough uh, to work with in Exymmetry. But anyway, that's how you pass a trigger in Exymmetry dual engine. I think it's a really cool feature. And uh, this is just scratching the surface. And I can't wait to see what we all do with this. Uh, once again, here's the open that I built. And this was, like I said, all real time from Exymmetry. Um, if you have any questions, uh, please feel free to visit the forums on Exymmetry.com. And also, there's a great Facebook group uh, online called Exymmetry and Unreal Engine. Uh, it's a great group. And if you ever have any questions, somebody is always there uh, to answer it. Thanks again for watching. This has been Jamie, and I hope to talk to you soon.